We're coming into the new year hot, guys. I'm glad 2023 is here and so are you. And new guns that are coming out. G&G, &G, as expected, are coming out with some heaters. But what the hell is this? What is this mayo monstrosity? What's going on, you guys? My name is Cisco, and as I said before, we're gonna be taking a look at the newest line of guns from G&G &G of 2023. It's literally the 4th of January. It's literally the beginning of the year. And these guns were supposed to arrive in December. Not gonna blame G&G &G because the uh, Airsoft world currently is kinda zucked. You know, we've been talking about it for the past two years. But the first gun that we're gonna be taking a look at is the G&G &G GTW91P. More like WTF is this G&G. &G. In all seriousness, guys, the GTW91 is a replica of the Taiwan 91 or the T91, which is a clone of the M16. And yeah, it, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's a little off for me, okay? Like, honestly, every country that clones the M16 always does it a little cursed, okay? Like Korea did it, China did it, Taiwan did it, and it's just, it's like the same, but it's slightly different. It's like the off-brand Mayo, oh. that's still the same price as regular Mayo. It's like, are you gonna risk it? I Like, hey, I don't really know, but let's dive in a little bit deeper to see what they did with the GTW91P. So if you guys didn't know, g, &G actually released a combat machine version of the GTW91 last year, which featured their polymer receiver and a combat machine gearbox. But this version is full metal. Uh-oh, you know what that means. You know what g, g says, right? Full metal, $500. Will it live up to that stereotype? We'll find out in a little bit. But going over the external, starting from the rear, we do have a LE style adjustable stock, six position buffer tube, kind of standard, a very angular, not A2 pistol grip. Interesting. We also have the not M16 carrying handle. It's, guys, like just, it's just a little, everything's just a little different. Okay, it's just a little off for me, okay? It doesn't even have the hole to mount like the rail on top. So you have to remove it completely, which it does have Picatinny on the up receiver. Thank goodness. So you can actually mount an optic. Then moving on to the front, we do have their rectangular handguard. It's like it doesn't fit your. Oh, actually, this is this is actually pretty slim. Doesn't feel bad. Okay, I'll, I'll give it to you, Gigi. This this isn't bad, but again, it's a little off. Okay, you do have uh, the fixed front iron sight and a sling point. We that swivels. We. Oh, it's the end. Okay, it, it doesn't go full 360 rotation, so keep that in mind. And then you have a very nice, sleek pencil style metal barrel, which is cool. And of course, that is going to be on 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread, so you can mount whatever flash hider, mock suppressor, tracer unit onto the front that you so desire. And lastly, to finish off the externals, we do have a nice, small Picatinny, like three slot Picatinny rail section there for flashlights or lasers, and that's it. It's like literally not big enough for like a vertical grip or a grenade launcher. So it's, you know, just a little treat. A little Halloween snack sized uh, Kit Kat bar, just for you. But instead of it being a rectangle, it's like a square, it's smaller. So to summarize the externals, anything that isn't made of metal is going to be using GG's nice, reliable, legendary polymer. And if you don't know about GG's polymer, you should know, okay? Do your research, go, go look it up. It, it's been around forever, okay? But the last thing that I wanna note about the externals are going to be these nice Taiwanese trademarks that are on the side of the receiver. I don't read Taiwanese, but I'm assuming that they're gonna be genuine. So this is a genuine knockoff M16. Now, moving on to the internals, the GTW91P is featuring the amazing, the Gucci G2 gearbox. You know what that means. It has the nice compression set, full metal rag piston, the integrated electronic trigger unit and MOSFET, the 25K Ifrit motor. But what I like about this G2 gearbox specifically is that it has the auto cutoff feature. So if you look at the G2 magazine that comes with it, it is a standard M4 stop magazine. But on the back here, you will see a little notch. When the magazine is empty, it will actually hit a follower that is on the gearbox to stop the gun from firing, to let you know the gun is empty. And what you're gonna do is call customer service and say why the gun is broken and stopped working after you shot a full magazine through it and not reading the manual like you should or watching this video. 
But if you do watch this video, this is how you actually do it. Once the magazine is empty and the gun stops firing, you're gonna eject the existing magazine, reload a new magazine, and then hit the bolt catch to restart the gun. There you go. Or you could be like every other airsofter, use regular M4 magazines and just, you know, continue to fire until it's empty. Then you're like, oh shoot, it's empty. Then you reload, you know, but you're more than likely gonna call custom service. With the G2 gearbox, you know this gun is going to rip and it's front wired. Now I don't wanna talk about this gun. I already, I already didn't wanna talk about this gun, but now I really don't wanna talk about this gun. You know, because of the not M4 style stock, there was no battery space because, you know, they didn't wanna just limit it to the buff tube. So instead they front wired it to the handguard so you have more battery space. I understand it, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. Show them how to access the battery compartment. No. Tier sous le levier de chargement va tier la, what? Uh, after, after reading the manual guys, the way that you're gonna install the battery is to remove the front pin at the front of the handguard, which may require some tools. But once you remove it, you're gonna set it aside, set it somewhere safe where you won't lose it because it's important. Then from there, you're just going to pop off the top of the handguard and that exposes the battery space. You can see the plug right here. You can see the MOSFET tucked into the side. And just from the looks of it, you're going to need a butterfly or tri-panel LiPo battery. Don't try anything else. I'm fairly sure it won't fit. One last note about the internals is that it has a three round burst. No, no, not like a programming three round burst, like it's on the selector. So you have safe right now what it's in, you have semi, you have three round burst, and then you have full auto. And if you wanna go from full auto to safe, you can. This is a 360 selector. What is, what is reality right now? What is this? What I don't even know. The G&G GTW91P is chronoing in at about 380 feet per second with a 0.20 gram BB and a rate of fire of about 20 BBs per second with an 11.1 LiPo. Now, as I said earlier, if you want a full metal airsoft gun from G&G, it's gonna cost you. But surprisingly, this gun isn't too bad. The G&G GTW91P is retailing for $340 at airsoftgi.com. And make sure you use the Wombo Combo for the best savings in Airsoft. That's not bad, actually. $340 for a full metal Airsoft gun with the G2 gearbox. That's actually pretty good, especially since this is much more affordable than the other G2 gearbox guns that g, &G has. And, you know, I don't know how g, &G came up with that price. Maybe they knew it wasn't gonna sell too well on the US market, I'm not sure. This is a very different replica from an M4, but still has the same controls, excluding the, you know, that three round burst, which is just hilarious still. I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna leave that set right there, okay, at full auto. But would you pick this gun up? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, yeah. You should pick one up. N no. Come on, you got it, it's mayo. I have enough mayo at home, boy. But it's mayo in a different language. No, you know. They have an M-Lock version. Yeah, you know, okay, that's another thing. I forgot to mention that there is an M-Lock rail kit for the GTW91P, okay? g and is gonna be selling that separately. And from the manual, it looks like they're gonna be selling it as a complete gun as well. It's already crushed, just voila, why? All right, enough with this gun. We've talked about it, enough. Next gun, boys. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Ooh. Ooh, this is what I'm talking about, baby. This is the gun that you've seen on all of our social media except the main video. This is it. The G&G ARP9 3.0. Let's dive in together. Starting off with the G&G ARP9, this is a pistol caliber carbine style airsoft gun as indicated by the pistol style magazine, which we will talk about a little bit more later. Going over the other externals, we have a four inch M-Lock handguard, which is very clean. It's updated, uh, different from the original ARP9 handguard. And honestly, I like this a little bit more. This one's more octagonal in shape compared to the more rectangular shape of the original ARP9 handguard. So clean. You do have a three inch outer barrel. So the threads, which are 14 millimeter counterclockwise are recessed, recessy. Okay. You also get the M lock vertical grip, Knight's armament style iron sights, the ambidextrous style charging handle, standard AR controls, and ergonomic pistol grip, which is updated. Honestly, it's pretty clean. I'm glad to see GG is getting with the times. But the two denoting features of the ARP9 3.0 are going to be number one, the magazine release. As you know, the original ARP9 uses this paddle style mag release, but this is different. It actually has 
uh, an extension here so you can actually eject the magazine with your trigger finger, which is so damn nice. That was my one gripe with the original ARP9. And the other noting feature is this stock. You see it, you like it, but you're confused because this is an AG and you might be wondering where the battery is. It's actually in the stock here. Believe it or not, there is a plate that is removed and you can fit a battery, an 11-1 LiPo up to 1,000 milliamp hours into this stock. It's actually pretty spacious considering how small it is. On top of that, the stock folds. So you can make this short gun even shorter. G&G designed this folding stock design to keep it as minimalist as possible, but still usable and clean. g, &G I gotta commend you for your innovation in airsoft this is something very different that i actually really really like and i want to buy it separately it's going to be available separately right gng now getting into the internals of the arp9 3.0 it is going to be featuring the mig gearbox which mig is an acronym for mosfet integrated gearbox gng come here come on there's too much you do too much going on. You got too many acronyms, too many different things, different gearboxes. Just come on, clean it up for us, please. Okay. But I will say, I am very glad that you guys did an integrated MOSFET into the gearbox instead of doing the inline MOSFET on the other guns that you currently have because it opens up so much battery space. Obviously, it wouldn't fit in here, so you had to redesign it. So I want to see that done with the other gearboxes, okay? Thank you. You also have the 25K Ifrit motor. You know, it's going to rip out of the box. It's gonna be nice. And then you have a rotary style hop-up unit as well to dial in your hop-up to the correct adjustment that you needed. Uh, yeah, there was just, uh, <laughs> With the MIG gearbox, the g, &G ARP9 3.0 is gonna be chronoing in at about 330 to 350 feet per second with a 0.20 gram BB and a rate of fire of about 20 BBs per second with an 11.1 LiPo. Honestly, that's that's pretty good. G and G, like getting that high of an FPS with that short of a barrel, kudos. That must mean the compression set is pretty good. Now it's time to talk about the big, I mean, little elephant in the room. I don't know what it is about PCCs, but when they come with a shorty mag like this, they're bad. And I don't mean bad in like an ungood way. I mean bad in a really good way, okay? Like, I don't know, it's just so clean. Classic Army. PTS, hop on it. What are you doing? Zion arm, Zion's tactical. Hello, do the shorty max, okay? This is dope. But this particular magazine is called the FCCM ARP9 magazine. Uh, it's another acronym, GNG. Please stop with the acronyms, okay? FCCM stands for four channel converging magazine. So unlike a traditional mid cap magazine where there's one spring, one follower, and one channel, this has four individual channels with four individual springs and four individual loaders to load them all into the magazine. The reason g, &G did this was to increase the BB capacity. This short of a magazine actually holds 68 rounds. That's actually pretty damn good. And we've tested it already. It feeds fantastically. There's no issues with it. g, &G again, with the innovation in Airsoft, I gotta give it to you guys. Just clap it up for yourselves. Give yourselves a hand. One thing that I have to note about the GNG Air P9 magazine is that it will not work on any non GNG pistol caliber carbine. So it won't work on the Classic Army X9 or PX9 or the Zion Arms uh, PW9. Why? This is what I'm saying. GNG, what are you doing? Okay, PTS, Classic Army, Zion Arms, please. Shorty magazines is what we need. Look how clean it looks. Imagine your gun with this short magazine. You're welcome. A last few things to note about the GNG ARP9 3.0 that come out of the box. Well, first off, the box, pretty damn nice, nice short compact. I like to see it. And then inside you get like this suede lined box with like gold. What is this, GNG? This is, what does GNG stand for, huh? Gucci and Gucci, huh? Well, I don't know the reason for it, but you know, maybe they want you to feel Gucci, okay? And then a couple things that come out of the box with the gun are going to be this mock suppressor that isn't really a mock suppressor. Like, GNG, what is this? It's like a blast shield, like muzzle break. I, I don't know, but it will fit inside the rail system right there. So this will also actually give you a reference to if you want to mount a tracer inside there as well. You can follow the sizing of this. And it also includes a D-shaped style QD sling point that you can mount onto the stock or at the end of the receiver here. So you have a couple of mounting options. All right, time to get to the price. 
After it's all said and done, the G&G Air P9 3.0 is retailing for $345 at airsoftjet.com. And make sure you use the Wombo Combo for the best savings in Airsoft. $345 for a polymer gun. Well, you know, I guess I'm really gonna need that suede box. And I guess innovation isn't cheap, but I gotta say, G&G, what you have innovated with the Air P9, it's, it was done very well. It was well executed and and just built very, very nice. I have an ARP9. I, I have an ARP9. I don't need another ARP9. Come on, get the update. No, I don't. You I, need I, no, I this don't update. Need, I don't need it. I don't. Where's my wallet? Damn it. <sighs> Maybe you call G&G. Maybe they'll let you keep this test model. I'll be right back. Well, just got off the phone with Gingy. They said I can't keep it. They offered to sell me this test model for 450 bucks, and I don't get it because that's more than retail. Whatever. Boys, please get this away from me because I, I really might buy this right now. Here, just take it, please. please. Okay. Oh, another gas blowback pistol from Gingy. Hmm. Let's take a dive in together. Now, in front of me is the new Gingy GX45 Mark V. Mark V, G and G, are there, is there like the Mark IV, Mark III? Let me know, please. But first glance, this is a 1911 base, which is obviously meant for those airsoft buds, those old heads that like the 1911, because you know, two world wars, you know what I'm saying? That's right, baby. But they wanna get with the times without changing their gun. So let's dive into the GX45 together to see what G and G has done to get with the times. Right off the bat, the GX45 is made of full metal, has a metal slide and a metal frame. Unlike the other polymer GNG gas blowback pistols out there, because FUDs don't believe in polymer. They believe metal is quality, even though GNG's polymer is amazing. But to go in depth, the slide, as you can see, has these nice lightning cuts, nice serrations on there, so you can get a nice grip to power stroke the slide. And then you also have the window cuts on there to lighten up the slide as well. So it can be as snappy as their polymer gas blowback pistols, which I will say does a pretty damn good job. This gun is very snappy. Other features of the slide include a three dot iron sight system, a standard front sight post, with the 5.1 adjustable rear sight, which I like to see. Moving on to the frame, of course, full metal again, with a classic feel to it. You do have a skeletonized trigger, a skeletonized hammer, but you also have an ambidextrous safety. Very nice. You also have an extended slide release for those of you that got short thumbs like me. And the last denoting feature of the GX45 are going to be these polymer textured grips okay they're not stipple because fuds don't believe in stippling but i will say that these grips are actually textured very nice they feel comfortable in the hands you get a solid grip on them and there's enough space to manipulate all the controls especially if you have small fingers like mine one gripe that i have about the gx45 that gg missed out on gg you're doing so well but where is the picatinny rail where is it? I, where, how can I mount a flashlight to this? I want to be able to see and do my tactical flashlight. You know, where is it at? Huh? Fuds don't believe in flashlights. Really? No. What? What? Why? Hey, the original 1911 didn't have a flashlight mount on it. You know, they won two world wars without flashlights. Now where g, g has failed to put a flashlight mount, they have made up in performance because the GX45 is using their patented whirl valve system, which is being used in all of their other gas blowback pistols. And if you've seen our reviews on their systems before, you know it is very gas efficient. The magazine itself actually holds 26 rounds, unlike other 1911s that are on the market that only hold about 15 BBs, okay? You're getting about high kappa levels of capacity in a single stack magazine. And because of the whirl valve system, you know it's gonna feed every single round and lock back the slide when you are done, okay? And the last noting feature of the GX45, like the other g, &G gas blowback pistols, is the hop-up unit. It actually is adjusted with this hop-up key that is shaped like a bullet, okay? It's actually very easy to use, very convenient. You just slide it down the outer barrel like that, and then you just click it into place, you can hear it. And you can fine tune your hop up to the specific BB that you want to use. 
The GNG GX45 Mark V is chronoing in at about 330 feet per second with a 0.20 gram BB and a rate of fire of what that trigger figure do, boy! 330 feet per second, that's pretty average for a gas blowback pistol, but G&G's design, their innovation with their roll valve technology, just works wonders. You're gonna get multiple fills of BBs on one fill of green gas. And after you adjust the hop up for the BBs, there's nothing else that you need to do. It performs great out of the box and you can run this gun all day. The G&G GX45 Mark V is retailing for $178 at airsoftjai.com. And again, use the Wombo Combo for the best savings in Airsoft. Whoo, $178 for a 1911? It's kind of steep. But considering G&G's performance and technology that they've included, I will say it would probably cost more to get an existing airsoft gun and upgrade it to this level of performance and efficiency, which is a good thing because it's one and done. You know, FUDs don't believe in upgrades, so you're good to go out of the box. There's nothing you need to do but adjust the hop up. Now, with all that being said, you can just pick up the GX45 and run it alongside your 10 year old combat machine, you FUD. All right, boys, are there any other airsoft guns? Nope, that's the last one. Okay, all right, bye guys. Wait, no, you have to close out the video, come on. Damn it, I thought, all right. All right guys, thank you for watching our overview of the newest releases from G&G. &G. Let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below and which one you plan on picking up. All of these are available at airsoftgi.com and make sure you use the Wombo Combo to get the best savings. You can get free shipping on all these guns actually and rewards points. And don't forget, if you spend over $20 at airsoftgi.com, you're gonna enter our shopping spree giveaway where we give you a chance to win a shopping spree just for shopping with GI. So go shop at GI. It helps supports us directly, okay? Helps keep the lights on, helps us make these videos that you guys can be informed of and be entertained with. Other than that, my name is Cisco and I will see you guys later. Peace.